On August 13th, we started training for a marathon, but we have a huge problem. There is absolutely no footage. Yes, sir. Uh, we want the update as to how everything's been going. Today is day one of training for my marathon. It's on October 23rd. Today is August 29th, and I'm not a terrible runner. I'm actually a really good one. I used to run a lot when I was trying to lose weight. Yeah, it's awesome experience. I did a mile this morning, so we'll tune in on day two. So you're probably wondering why we even accepted this marathon challenge in the first place. At this point in our life, we were going through a lot of tough challenges. To start off, our grandpa died at the beginning of this year, and we were living with him for the majority of 2021. And when he died on January 1st, we kind of felt purposeless. There's a John Slow. That's our grandpa. Hi, Grandpa. Hi. We decided to move with our family to Florida. And during this whole time of us doing social media, we've lived with our family for the majority of the time. And after our family got tired of us living in their houses on June 1st, 2022, we decided to move to St. Louis, Missouri. All right, Calvin, it is June 2nd, 2022, and you are laying on the floor in St. Louis, Missouri. You're on the floor, and um, guess where you're at? You're eating a uh, bullet top ramen on your unfurnished apartment, stair steps in St. Louis. Just look back on this, I'm up with the work in. I'm looking back on myself already like, yeah, you did. I'm gonna do it till I die. Let's see how this turns out. Yeah, St. Louis, Missouri. You're probably wondering, why the f would you move to St. Louis, Missouri? We had decided to move to St. Louis, Missouri because we thought that we would be working with a company that sponsored us first form. Well, Calvin, let's be honest. Number one, St. Louis is cheap. That's right. And from June to August, we had lived in St. Louis, Missouri and just got very comfortable in the position that we were at. We finally lived by ourselves and we lived on our own and nothing really challenged us to move forward. So when we got hit with the opportunity to do a full marathon, we said, hell yeah. Damn. <laughs> huh? Wanna know the truth of what happened? I started shit myself. Really? Yeah. That was, a, that was a chunky coming out. A turtle. <laughs> We knew that our bodies were capable, and most importantly, we wanted to inspire you, the person watching, to change their life. But like we said, there's no video. We don't have a camera crew following us around the whole time, so a lot of the times, our head is down getting to the work. And although St. Louis, Missouri is great, it's not ideal, and it's not a place that really challenges you to get out of your comfort zone. Out of your comfort zone. Yes, it does. And honestly, saying what we've had to go through out loud is kind of a lot, but there's always this one saying that we keep in mind. Nobody cares work harder. Over the past two months, we've overcame a lot of addictions, a vaping addiction, a weed addiction, and we've ran further in our lives than we've ever ran, and that's a lot. And this always brings us back to why we started running in the first place. To lose weight, we did tons of cardio. We actually didn't touch a single weight for our entire weight loss journey. And during that time, I made a commitment to myself that I was gonna be an ultra runner. Yes, an ultra marathon runner. <laughs> And in order to do one ultra marathon, you gotta do a marathon. And of course, we could've went for the half, but I said Calvin, let's go for the full. And so a lot of people are asking us, how did the marathon go? 
Well, here's a few things that we took from the marathon that we want to share with you guys. So let's talk about the actual marathon, miles one through 10. Our legs felt amazing, and this is probably the best run we had ever had in our entire lives. All right, you guys, we're on pace for a 420 mile marathon. I got some already, thank you, I do. I need some water though. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. And miles 10 through 15. This is where our legs started to feel a little bit of attrition and fatigue. And if you don't know, a half marathon is 13.1 miles. That's when our legs started to feel a little bit of cramping. Not too bad though. Enough to the point where we needed to start taking gels and drinking more sodium. No, um, I got like one I could spare. I got one on me. You guys want energy gum? Run gum? No. I'll take it. Okay. I'll take all the crack you can give me. Okay. All right, boys. I'll see you. All right, man. Love you. All right, past halfway, you guys. Still cruising, looking fire. I think you in here. Still cruising, putting in this fucking work. Yeah! Now let's talk about miles 15 to 20. God damn! <laughs> this is where our legs really started to feel it. And around mile 18 and 19, that got to the point where we couldn't run that much anymore. All right, so we found our wall. Mile 19, just past it right there. And this is the first time it's actually like, it's hitting us right now. Our walk, give my walk. We're speed walking, sexy walks. One through, you know, mile 18 was really good. We started feeling it around like 17, 18. No, like 13 is like when you start feeling the very inklings of like the, oh, yeah. any type of cramp. Mile 18 is where you get like, now it's, it's zoning, on your body. Now it's zoning through you. This sexy. is probably the hardest part right here, the, the final the final third. We kind of finished giving up on that four minute, four hour, 20 minute mark. We still have about seven more miles, so. Mind you, we were just going into this marathon wanting to finish. And to this day, my knee still hurts from running the marathon. I don't know what it is, but I gotta get it checked out. But like I said, at miles 18 and 19, our legs started to feel like bricks and they were just locked up. No matter how much sodium we drank and how much water we had, our legs wasn't feeling any better. Alright, I don't want anybody to think my cardio is bad. And now prior to this marathon, we were hearing some bad reviews about how Boise, Idaho and their marathon running stations don't really go well together. They were kind of a little bit lazy towards the end of the marathon. And so 15 through 26, I could count on one hand how many water stations there were. Yeah, I need some fucking water. That's it. Like, that's it. I'm not bad at this marathon. Yeah, but they kind of missed the mark on the Yeah, they water. missed a lot of marks, you guys. There's the absolutely water, no bro. water. From the, from the fucking turnaround to... From like mile 19... To 15 to 19 or like even 13 to 19 that's like seven six yeah. miles with no water 13 to 19 there's no water Fun. seems like they kind of forgot about the full marathon runners and honestly those are the people that really needed the attention calvin actually took my damn rag and went and took a shit here's the video off over there dropping a deuce right now in the back of the woods i was like i'm about to shit myself i was like bro all right take my towel Wipe your ass, shit, let's get back on it. I gotta pee, but I realize every time I go pee, I let out all my fluids, so I'm holding on to everything I got right now, you guys. Yeah, this is a tough shit, this is tough shit right here. Not only was there a lack of assistance from the Boise Marathon running stations, we were also running into uncharted territory. It's really hitting now, you guys. That was Start true. Hit. All right, let's do this, come on, let's push through. Shoe back on. Fuck, bro, on. my toes curled, bro. I don't know what to do. Walk with no shoe, can you walk with no shoe? Try walking with no shoe. Toes are curling right now. And nobody's sucking them either. That's the crazy part. So from miles 20 to 24, we did walk a lot of it. But this is how we were walking. As you can see, we definitely weren't slouching. And miles 24 to 26 was probably the best time of our life because we realized we were about to finish. One thing I learned about this marathon, for anybody that's watching this and is thinking about even running a half, I promise you, you can do a full. You still should try it, I think. I think everybody should do one of these. Yeah. Like, even if you have to stop and walk, do it. But don't let the fear of it being so hard stop you from even going. See, if we would have been afraid, you know, and said, oh no, we're, that's not for us. We're not marathon runners, we're not. Yet, yet, you have to be able to be willing to fuck up a lot. At the end of the day, we're not stopping. 24 to 26, we will push. Maybe 25 to 26. How I've explained to everybody who's asked us how the marathon went, it's sort of like this. Imagine you start off a race with 100% battery, full green, ready to go. Once you start running and you get to mile, say 13, 14, that battery is completely gone. So what you have to do is rely on that training and plug in a brand new battery. And if you put in a 23% battery, you're not gonna go that far. 
But if you put in a 77% battery or an 87% battery, you're gonna go a lot further and most likely be able to finish out the marathon strong. And that extra battery is all based off of your previous training leading up to the marathon. But that's what makes our first marathon experience different and makes it awesome. Don't, Don't wait, lose weight. We did it! We did it! We did it! We did it! Peace up! Oh.